Hello, thanks for coming to our grocery shopping tour. Lincoln Trail District Health Department has partnered with Save-A-Lot today to walk through the grocery store, look at some foods and how we can make our eating habits healthier by shopping better for our health. So we're gonna walk through the grocery store today and look at some different foods and look at food labels and what we need to get. Before we get started, what are some of the things that we think about when we say, I need to go to the grocery store? What do we want to do? Some of the common things people think of, well, how many of you shop the ads to make sure that you're getting stuff on sale to make our food dollars go farther, to make sure that I'm getting stuff in season so that it's a little cheaper to feed my family. And so when I look at that, I also cut coupons. Do y'all cut coupons so you get stuff even cheaper? Now with coupons, we wanna be careful to make sure it's something I would really use. A lot of times people cut coupons because it says this is 55 cents off. We get to the grocery store and find out the one we normally use is a dollar cheaper anyway. And so those really didn't save us anything. So we wanna make sure the coupons that we do use are ones that are gonna save us money in the long run. On the other hand, some coupons save a lot. And if I look through and find stuff that really is useful, then those are the ones I want to have. The other thing I want to do before I go to the grocery store is make a list. How many of you make a list before you go to the grocery store? The next part with making those lists is making sure I take it to the grocery store with me. And I also want to make sure that I have on it what I need. Not just what I'm out of, but what I truly plan on eating. What I truly plan on feeding my family. So that's what I want to do with my list. I also want to make sure I give myself a little wiggle room in that list so that when I go to the grocery, if I see something new or see something that is clearanced out or on sale that my kids would like or that my family would like, that I can feed my family in a healthy way, then I have just a little wiggle room. Now that doesn't mean my list should be half wiggle room. It should just be a little. And with that list, when I make that, I want to make sure that I've checked my cupboards to make sure that I'm truly either out of that or almost out of that. Because if not, then I end up with three packages of the same thing and one of them goes bad before I can use it. So we do want to make our list. We want to make our list based on the meals that we're going to eat. Because if we just say, oh, I'm out of this, so I'll write that down, but I have no intention of using it, then we're in the same situation of things going bad. So we want to make sure we make our list before we go. The other thing I want to do, read food labels. You started reading food labels? When you start reading food labels, a lot of people say, it takes me two hours to go to the grocery store because I have to read those food labels, and it takes so long. And it does when you first start. But we're creatures of habit. We buy the same foods over and over and over. So once you've read that food label 10 times, as long as that package doesn't say new and improved on it, then I know I can have that. And so it's easier for me to say, okay, I can go to the grocery and take less time. But I wanna make sure I give myself that time to go to the grocery store. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I eat before I go to the grocery store. Because we've all went to the grocery store hungry before. And what happens then? We feel like, oh my goodness, everything in the world looks good. So I wanna buy all kinds of stuff. And some stuff probably that I wouldn't have bought if I didn't feel hungry. The other thing I've heard people say is, I don't want to go to the grocery store too full, because then I'm not hungry for anything, and I leave without buying the foods that I need. So I want to make sure that I take the steps to be prepared to go to the grocery before I go. Y'all ready to go to the grocery store and see what we learned? Yeah. How do I know what foods I should eat? That's a great question. Most grocery stores are divided up to where they have like an aisle where sales stuff is, but then around the perimeter of the grocery store, around the outside edges, usually we find our produce, we find our fresh meats, milks, cheeses, eggs, breads, all of that stuff is around the edges. So when I look at that, I want to do most of my shopping around the edges of the grocery store, and then a little bit in the center, but more around the edges. Does that make sense? Sure does. All right, guys, let's head over to the produce section and look at some fresh fruits and vegetables. Okay, when we look at produce, a big thing is to look at serving sizes because everybody knows fruits and vegetables are healthy for them. But what size fruits and vegetables? When I think about how healthy they are for me, I think, oh, more is better. 
but that's not always the case. If you have diabetes, if you're looking at your weight, if you're looking at those things, then the calories, carbohydrate content, or sugar that's in foods is very different if you have a bigger size. For instance, this is a big apple, which would probably be about two servings. So if you see this apple, it's kind of a large apple. Whereas if I look at these little apples, for instance, in the bag, they're very small comparatively. And so this would be a serving size for an apple. You want your fruits such as apples and oranges to be about the size of a tennis ball. So that's more this size, not a baseball like this one. As we walk over, we'll look at some vegetables next. the vegetable section and vegetables are very good for us so we want to make sure that we want to have our vegetables some of the things to think about when we look at vegetables some vegetables are termed non-starchy vegetables and other vegetables are termed starchy vegetables so for my people with diabetes uh, watching starches watching weight because of extra starches and never eating any other vegetables it's easier to get extra calories with those starchy vegetables starchy vegetables include potatoes corn, peas, lima beans, winter squash, dried beans, pumpkin, sweet potatoes, those are all considered starches. So when I look at those, those don't count as my normal non-starchy vegetables. Those would, my non-starchy vegetables would be like my carrots, my peppers, my lettuce, cucumbers, onions, all of those things. And so when I look at those, I might have to get a little more creative at what my vegetable choices are. Other things we want to look at with our fresh vegetables, again, if you're looking at cost, looking at feeding your family for, a little, for less, there's some convenient items in the vegetables. You may have already cut up carrots, you may have already cut up lettuce, those kind of things. And those are more expensive than the ones that are not already cut up because they've had more preparation done to them. They're a convenience item for us. Now, that depends on you and your family whether you do those or not. If you're one of those people that if it's not already peeled, not already cut up, ready to go, you're less likely to eat it, then it may make more sense for you to spend a little extra and have it already prepared. That way you still get your vegetables in. Let's go to the meat section and see what's there. The next section we come to, the first section in the meat department here, is the processed meats. When we look at processed meats, we get concerned about how much salt is in foods and how much fat is in foods. But there are choices we can make to make better choices. When we look at our processed meats, we want to read the food label. We want to look for the lower sodium ones and the lower fat ones. And sometimes how foods are made makes a difference. For instance, if I just get a regular bologna, the fat content in regular bologna per one slice is about 11 grams. And so that's a pretty high fat meat choice. Whereas if I get a bologna made with chicken or turkey, when I look at the label with the one made with chicken or turkey, the total fat per slice is four and a half grams. So that's a big difference in how much fat is in something. Same way with hot dogs. Hot dogs are a processed meat where meats are ground and put in a casing to make a hot dog. And so when we look at a regular hot dog, the regular hot dogs, the total fat um, per serving is about 11 grams for one hot dog. Whereas if I get a hot dog that's made with chicken or with turkey and it's a lower fat or claims to be a lower fat, for instance, some of them say 40% less fat, 50% less fat, may even say 97% fat free. When I look at these, for instance, this is made with turkey and um, it is about six grams of fat per hot dog. So it's about half as much as the regular one. So those are big things to consider when I'm looking at processed meats. Y'all ready to go on to the fresh meats and look at those? As 
we get ready to talk about fresh meats, I wonder if there's any questions from you all about what we're getting ready to talk about or what we have talked about. So what should I look for when I'm buying fresh meats? When we look at fresh meats and what we're doing when we buy those, we're also still going to look at fat content and we're also going to look some at sodium if it's something that's been um, salt preserved and those kind of things. For instance, when we look at hamburger meat, a lot of times now hamburger will say it's 85% lean, 15% fat, so you know how high in fat it is. And then it'll have 73% lean, 27% fat, and so you know which ones are going to be the higher fat ones. And a lot of people have that question of, well, if I get the more lean one, it costs more. And sometimes that's true, it does cost more. But when I think about it, if I'm frying it in my pan or you know, grilling it on the grill, how much of it am I losing because it was just fat? And so how much is really going into my recipe? If I'm making spaghetti, how much of it am I draining away at the end because it was fat that cooked up in my skillet? That's a great question. Okay. As we're looking at other fresh meats, I wanna make sure I get the leaner choices. Some of the leaner cuts of meat are gonna be the loins or the rounds. The chuck, the rib, those kind of cuts are gonna be my higher fat meats. So I wanna stick with those loins, rounds, those kind of meats. And so when I look at that, you can tell that as I pick up a ribeye, for instance. This ribeye, you can see all the fat going through it, all the marbling that it has. And that gives it a great flavor, but it also adds a lot of fat to that meat. Whereas if I pick up something like round steak, do you see the difference in how lean it is? There's lots less of that marbling going on. And so it's a lot less fat. The other thing when I do, when I get my meat home, before I cook it to help reduce the fat, for instance, if I look here at this strip steak, most of the fat is on the edge. And so I would trim that away before I cooked it that would make it a healthier choice for me. I'm gonna walk on down to where pork and chicken are and we'll talk a little bit about those. Same idea with the pork, when we look at that, I wanna get the one that's less marbled, so I wanna stay away from the chuck, those kind of uh, shoulder roast, because they're gonna be higher in fat. When I look at the loins, that kind of stuff, for instance, pork loin. I look at pork loin, you can see how lean it looks. Actually a pretty good choice. And so a lot of people steer clear from pork because they think of bacon and that kind of stuff. But there are pork that is very lean that I can have and still be in that low fat category. When we look at chicken, which is right next to this, when we look at chicken, the big thing with chicken is, of course, the breast meat is gonna be the healthier choice, the lowest fat. And a lot of the fat, though, no matter what kind of chicken I eat, is right under the skin or with the skin. So you wanna take that skin off before you cook it. That way, you reduce how much fat is in it. The other thing is your cooking methods. So if I'm making chicken, there are other kinds of chicken other than just fried chicken. Because fried chicken, I'm adding fat to that. And if I roll it in something to give it that crispy crust, I'm also adding starch carbohydrates. For my people with diabetes, I wanna watch how much of that I have. So I wanna make sure that I'm fixing my chicken, either grilled, baked, boiled, or even broiled would be a way that I can fix my chicken, okay? We're gonna move on down to the milk section. Before we get started with this section, again, we'll ask if there's any questions. We're getting ready to talk about milks and things of that nature. So we're gonna talk about milk and dairy, yogurt, cheeses, those kind of things. Any questions before we get started? I have a question about milk. How old should my daughter be before I switch her milk? That's a great question. Infants, until they're a year old, stay either on breast milk or formula, and then we switch them to regular milk. And the regular milk we switch them to would be whole milk. They stay on whole milk until they're two years old. After two, they can go to a lower fat milk. With milks, there's skim milk, 1% milk, 2% milk, and whole milk. The only difference in those is how much fat is in them. And just like I said earlier with your question, it is after two years old, nobody needs to be on whole milk unless for some reason they're way underweight or trying to gain weight and their doctor has told them to be. But for the most part, after we're two, we can go to either skim milk or 1% milk and be fine. Okay. 
Next we look at yogurt, which is right next to milk. With yogurt, the big thing with that is if you're watching your carbohydrate content because of diabetes or you're watching your fat content because of calories and cholesterol, those kind of things, you want to make sure you get a low fat, no sugar added yogurt. That's why it's going to be a healthier choice, an easier choice to count in your meal plan. We're going to move on to cheeses. As we look at cheeses, cheeses can be a high protein nutritious snack. So we want to look at cheeses. Also, we put cheeses in lots of our cooking, casseroles, those kind of things. We put cheeses on sandwiches and just have them as treats sometimes. And cheeses are fine. We just want to look at, again, the fat content because some of them can be really high fat and add lots of fat to our foods. A lot of kids today, for instance, eat string cheese. And so some string cheese, when I get it, even though this one says it's made with part skim milk, when I look at it, one of them is still five grams of fat for one cheese stick. Whereas if I get the same ones, the same brand, sometimes in a lighter version, this one, for example, is two and a half grams of fat. So much different. Even though the first one says made with part skim milk, it's still higher in fat than some of the other ones. That's why it's so important to read that food label so you know that you're comparing the right thing to the right thing and what you're looking for with it. Now, cheese is high protein. It has got some fat in it, so it's not a free-for-all. So we want to make sure that when we eat our cheeses that we know it's part of my meal plan, not just extra and added on top of. We're going to look a little bit at butters since we're in this section. Butters and margarines, I know a lot of times we use that word interchangeable. A lot of us eat margarine and call it butter. Butter is actually the one made from real, um, it's made from milk, it's made from the fat, it's made from those kind of things. And so it's going to be a higher fat choice usually. And it's also made from animal products. So it's going to be the one higher in cholesterol. The margarines, most of them are made with vegetable oils. So they're going to be a little lower fat. Do you have any questions about margarines and butters? What margarines are lower in fat and how do I know? It's a great question. When I look at margarines, I want to look at the ingredients as well as the food label, and that'll tell me. Of course, the food label under total fat, as long as it's for the same serving size, if it's less, it's going to be lower fat than the one you were looking at before. But another way to tell, if the first ingredient is water, then that's going to usually be a lower fat margarine. Next, we're going to head over to the breads and look at those a little bit to see what our healthier choices are over there. As we look at breads, a lot of choices come to mind because we look at the big thing with breads is people say get high fiber bread, get whole wheat bread, get whole grain breads, and those are what we want to strive for to put more fiber in our diet. And it's different than just saying wheat bread or just saying brown bread. We want to make sure it says whole grain, whole wheat, whole rock, whatever, so that I know that it is whole grain and it's going to have more fiber in it. The way we know that for sure is when we look at the labels. So when I look at a label, I see total fiber for this one, one slice, is zero grams. So it's not a high fiber bread by any means. Whereas if I look at the wheat one, and this says just wheat, we'll see how many it has. It has one gram. So it's different than the white one in that it has at least one gram of fiber. Whereas some of the other ones that may say whole grain or whole wheat are going to have even more than that. For instance, this one says 100% whole wheat. And so when I look at it, total fiber is going to be three grams, a big difference in breads. Any questions about breads or things that we've went over before we move on? Well, how do we read food labels? That's a great question. When we look at food labels, they can be very confusing. So for instance, let's just pick one of these and look at it, the one I had right then. When we look at it, it's gonna tell me, first of all, what a serving size is. For instance, with this bread, serving size is two slices. And with a lot of breads, it'll say one slice, but for some reason this says two, 
And so when I look at this, I have to remember that everything I'm doing is based on two slices. And so just like a minute ago, when I said that other bread was one gram of fiber per slice, this one is three grams per two slices, not per slice like I thought originally, because it's great to look at that food label to know that for sure. And then I look at knowing that everything else listed on that label is based on the serving size. And so if I eat twice as much, I have to multiply by two. Instead of getting 120 calories, if I eat four slices, I get 240. So that makes sense with all labels. And then it's gonna tell me how much total fat is in it. And it's gonna break that down. Tell me how much of that is saturated. Tell me how much cholesterol is in it. It's gonna tell me how much sodium is in it. It's gonna tell me total carbohydrates. And for our people with diabetes, people watching those kind of things, carbohydrates are our sugars, our starches, our fibers, things like that. So under total carbohydrates, it's gonna break that down and tell me how much of that is sugar, how much is fiber, it may even say other carbohydrates. So that's what I wanna look at when I'm looking at that is total carbohydrates for that. So I hope that clears that up a little. As we get ready to wrap up our grocery shopping tour, why don't we go visit the candy aisle and see what differences is over there. Here we are at the candy aisle, and candies are one of those things that should be a treat. There is sometimes food, not an everyday thing, because we all know that candy is pretty much empty calories. High sugar, high fat, but boy does it taste good every now and then. So it's okay to have as a treat every now and then. We just wanna make sure it's a treat. The other things I hear a lot of my people, especially people with diabetes say, it's okay, I get the sugar-free candies. Well, a lot of sugar-free candies are made with sugar alcohols. Sugar alcohols are a form of sugar. They count about half to three quarters as much as plain old sugar. So they still can cause the blood sugar to go up, still have calories, still cause weight gain, all of those things. So I wanna be sure when I'm looking at my candies, especially the sugar-free ones, I know what's in them. Because a lot of times those sugar alcohols can also cause cramping, may cause some uh, bloating and gas, can even lead to some diarrhea. So I wanna be cautious with those. If I do eat them in small amounts, then that's usually not a big deal. But I wanna watch how much I eat at one time. So with candies, I want to know that they have quite a bit of sugar in them and that they're sometimes thing. As we get ready to wind up our grocery shopping tour, another thing to think about, we live in Kentucky. The weather sometimes is unpredictable, either with storms or with snow or with whatever. You know, a tree falls and you can't get out of your driveway or whatever. So you want to make sure that you have some foods on hand if a disaster or an emergency comes up, like a snowstorm or something of that nature. Make sure you, when you go to the grocery, you check your preparedness kit at home. Make sure you have enough food and water for at least about three to four days so that you know you have enough on hand if something were to happen. Grocery shopping is a big deal, a lot bigger deal than a lot of people give it credit for. How many times have we all said, I'm going to the grocery to get this, we go get 10 items, more than what we said we were going to get, and forget the one we went after. So it does take some planning and some learning. And I really applaud you all for being here today to learn more about going to the grocery store, more about reading food labels, more about some of the healthier choices we can make. As we get ready to wrap up, I also want to thank Save-A-Lot for having us here today. They were great and courteous and willing to let us come in and walk through their store, look at their products, and read food labels. So, happy shopping.